Hello everybody, Mailman here. We're going to include last night's hunt in with some other hunts this year because I want to bring something up. We're going to go into the equipment section of Goat Productions and we're going to have that in the playlist. We're going to talk about night vision. I'm starting to question whether I'm going to take anybody with night vision anymore. Hunter will go with me because he knows the ins and outs. He knows the controls of them. But what's happening is I like to go into night vision because I want to show people with a budget scope Quality IR on the front, Coyote Reaper XXL from Predator Tactics. You can get great video. You can put numbers up there competing with the thermal guys if you use common sense tactics with it. There's some things that have happened this year. We're going to go over a few videos from this year on some things that went wrong that cost us harvest and cost us video. So the first one is if you go with me to a feeder setup. You know that I take a lot of time in setting up these feeder setups with either a whole set or I'm going to have overloaded for you an area where them hogs are going to come into a specific area. Now, when you have night vision, the time to set that up and get everything right is before those hogs get there. You want to get into that situation where you can see that hole, see that overloaded area of corn, you know exactly where those hogs are going to stop so you can take that shot. The time to do that is not once the hogs are in there. If we start moving setups around when the hogs are in there, it's going to cast a shadow, and those shadows are going to make it more likely those hogs are going to be out of town. We're going to lose video. I lost video this year earlier because we were not set up in the right spot, started to get wash out, and then he had to jump onto my thermal. So first thing is be prepared. Be prepared with your setup. Line up where you're supposed to be. Know the controls on your night vision and your IR. A lot of people come with me, they don't shoot the night vision I shoot or the IR I use. Just be prepared and be ready to get on those controls fast. Everything happens fast with IR. Next thing is when you turn that IR light on, it's time to, it's time to shoot. It may not be based on the body language of an animal, but you better be ready when that IR comes on to shoot. We had a situation last night where the, his IR came on and I counted down and he didn't shoot. You have to be ready when you turn that IR on. You ID within three tenths of a second. Night vision is great for IDing animals. You automatically know what it is. Get back there on that safety and you watch the body language of that animal. Throw up a video right now of a coyote hunt. I knew this coyote was going to react to the IR. It was so close to me coming into the call. It was coming right in my direction. I can tell you, you will know that I knew the IR was going to affect it because you're going to see the recording. I pushed the recording button first because I knew as soon as that IR hit this coyote, it was going to be quick, a quick shot because of the reaction of that animal. I read the body language. The coyote's head obviously came up to alert. It knew that the IR was there, and I dropped that coyote really quickly. The other one we'll jump into right now is a video of a coyote coming right directly at me again at a farther range. I test it. I hit him with the IR light and I watched his reaction. He kept coming along. He kept feeding like nothing happened. Now I can get a lot of that long footage that you see. Every situation is not like that. Guys see that long IR on there and they see a lot of great footage and they want that. I understand that you want that footage, but the body language of the animal dictates that. I had another guy one time, we went out and it was a big hog. I had two big hogs we were, we were going after. He went out there, he set up his night vision, and I said, let's wait for that hog to get a little bit farther out into the field before we, we shoot it, just for recovery purposes. He wanted me to look through his scope to see it. He had a different IR than me. I looked through the scope. I'm watching the, the hog through my thermal, and I say, you better shoot that hog now, because I knew the, the reaction that hog finally seen that IR. He seen the shadow, his head come up. He wasn't even on the weapon to shoot that hog at that time. He said, "You, I thought we were gonna wait. We were gonna wait. The hunt changes a lot with night vision. We were gonna wait until that hog come further out. But once that hog noticed that IR, he got out of dodge. You have to stay on your scope with IR. You gotta be ready to shoot at any time or you're gonna be disappointed sometimes when that hog or that coyote sees that IR and is out of town. So last night, another thing is, when you turn that light on, you do not want to hit him at full full flood right off the bat. If you're full intensity, when you hit that animal, you are more likely to cause a reaction out of the animal. Now we're down into a situation where you got to take a quick shot and there's two of us. We had double IRs last night. So 
Hit that IR, be ready to shoot, but also have it at low intensity. Find that hog you want, find your target, turn that intensity up, and now we're looking for the shot. Another thing is, when there's two of us side by side, my IR was on and my animal was nice and calm. Two of them out of the three were nice and calm. You'll see in the video from last night. My IR was not affecting those animals at all. The guy beside me could have easily looked, seen the two animals in my IR, turned his IR on and we would have took those two animals. I was on the left hog. A lot of it is adapting. Another adapting you're gonna see in last night's hunt. I'm on the left hog. That hog goes behind and I tell him I'm on the left hog. He has his choice of either two right hogs. That hog goes behind another hog and goes into his zone now. I stay on the left hog. The left hog is mine. Both of these are his. That beam starts flying around like a kid in a Halloween store with a brand new lightsaber. His beam is moving left and right at light speed. He's breaking light speed with his IR light. Common sense tells you we cannot do that. We cannot have that light swinging around like that. They are going to notice that. And that's exactly what happened. The first one catches it, runs into the woods. He shoots the whole way back. When you're moving quickly, you miss things. He shoots the whole way back to my hog. I have to verbally tell him, not that one. You're on mine. Go to the one on the right. There's one to the right of me that is perfectly broadside walking. He goes back past that one again. Moving that light, and I know he was on a quality tripod. That's another thing that I knew. I know my buddy's equipment. I talked him into buying the tripod that he had. He had another brand tripod that he bought, and he and you're moving that fast. Move nice and slow and fluid and get on the animal and take the shot. We have quality equipment. We spend money on this equipment, and we have to still use it right. It, I don't get just because I have this IR using that equipment right. All of our tripod setups, you use those right and use them in your situations. Use that equipment to your advantage and get on that animal and take the shot. When that first hog reacted to his IR light, there's two responses to that. You either shut your IR off and then turn down the intensity or you're going to move to that next animal and you're going to shoot. That next one is going to react to it. If the first animal reacts to it, the odds tell you the second animal reacts to it. Luckily, these hogs go into the woods and the dumb one of them comes right back out. Again, I tell him, one hog in the field, we're going to take a shot at this hog. The hog comes out perfectly broadside. My IR is on the hog. When you have a night vision and I have a night vision, move to my IR. Again, hits that light, turns his light on. It's as bright as could be. Unfortunately, this time there's such a cluster that I didn't even push record on my night vision. I just wanted to get a kill and get out of there. I had to get a kill that night, and I'm glad I did because it was going so bad. Look at the other person's IR. Don't move your IR around so much. Turn your intensity down. Hit that hog and then turn it up. When he hit it with that high-intensity beam, that hog again, its head came up. I took the shot. I counted down and took the shot before he even took the shot. And then there's a couple of things we got to work on there. Is be ready. When you turn your beam on, be ready to shoot. There's not a lot of time sometimes when those animals react. A lot of times when I hit the hogs the first time and that hog reacts to me, I turn that light right back off and I come at a different angle or I try something different or I turn my intensity down even more. Or you could turn the light on above them and drop it down on them. There's so many variables that you can come up with a good IR and a quality tripod that you, you can move around nice and slow. Use all of those pieces of equipment you bought to your advantage. So hopefully this helps you. I'm going to make guys that come with me with night vision watch this video multiple times because we have to go over these things again and again. I actually lose it when I go to thermal for a while and come back to night vision. I got to sharpen my... Uh, Sharpen my blade up whenever I go back to night vision. You have to be on your toes with night vision compared to thermal. Thermal, you can get away with a lot more. There's that advantage of thermal, but you pay for it. You pay that extra money. So hopefully this helps you. Like and subscribe. There's going to be a couple videos in here we're going to put to show you. Hopefully you learn off some of the mistakes that I make. Thanks again.